before I took my first PTE exam, I was told by all my friends the exam room will be very, very noisy. But I didn't really believe them. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Hello everyone, this is Moni from BTE Magic and in today's video, I'm going to talk about 10 things that you need to know before taking your BTE exam. So yeah, this is the content of today's video and I also set up some timestamps so that you guys can choose which section you want to watch. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I would like to talk about is the test booking. So if you are looking to book your test, you will need to create an account on mypte, psnpte.com. You will need to click on sign up and enter your details. You then need to make sure that your last name and your first name matches exactly with your ID. If you have a middle name, please include it in your first name. Because if you fail to do so, you might not be allowed to take the exam. We have cases where students forgot their middle name and they were not allowed to take the test. And I have some incidents where students were still allowed to take the test but then when Pearson found out about that mistake that they forgot to put their middle name, then they cancelled the test result. So always make sure that you put your middle name with your first name. Once you completed all details, you can start booking the test. Just select the country and the goal of taking your test. So the country here means the country of your location. The next step is to choose your city or province and then you will see the closest test centers. Click on the calendar icon for each location so that you can book the test. Um, they will ask you to check your details again. If you are female, please do not choose male as your gender. All of this information will appear on your score report. The next thing is you will be required to answer some personal questions. And in terms of the payment, only debit and credit cards are accepted and they must be either Amex, MasterCard and Visa. So I believe we will soon have other payment gateways. But yes, once you make the payment, then your booking will be confirmed. The next part I want to talk about is rescheduling and cancellation. Be mindful that you can only reschedule your test maximum 6 times. If your test is within 14 days, then you cannot, yeah, you cannot reschedule your test. So the option is to just cancel the test or go ahead with the test. In terms of cancellation, if it's more than 14 days, then you will get a full refund. If it's 14 to 8 days before your test, then it's 50%. If it's 7 days or less, then no refund will be given to you. So be very, very careful with cancellation. If you are feeling sick and you don't think that you can make it to the exam, then you can reschedule it for free. But you must provide a medical certificate with a signature and a stamp from the medical center. Number three is the accepted IDs. So when you guys arrive at the test center, the invigilator will ask you to provide your identification. So if you are taking the test outside of your citizenship country, then the only accepted form of ID is your passport. So for example, if you are from India or you are from Philippines or you are from Thailand yeah, and you are taking the test in Australia, then you can only use passport. Okay, so if you are Australian and you're taking the test in Australia, then you can use other forms of IDs. Or if you are uh, Thai and you're taking exam in Thailand, then you can also use other forms of IDs. So when I talk about other forms of IDs, I mean your national identification card, or it can also be your driver license or military identification cards. You still have to double check the information on the website because there's some exception cases. You also have to make sure that you check the validity of your passport, the expiry date of your passport. Personally for me there was one incident when I forgot that my passport expired. I didn't check my passport properly. I went to the test and the invigilator told me that I will not be able to take the test on that day because my passport is not valid. So yeah, check the expiry date on your IDs. 
When you arrive at the test center, they will ask you to put all your stuff away in the locker. All your personal stuff, your mobile phones, your wallet, and any other, other things, everything else, except for your passport. And then you will get the key for your locker, and that's what you can take in the exam room. And before you enter the test room, they will give you an erasable notepad and two pens. You can actually get them on Amazon if you really want to. Basically, the erasable notepad it's just a bunch of laminated papers and sometimes students ask me can they bring the headset to the test room the answer is no and for every computer in the exam room there will be a headset and the brand will be either Plantronics or Andrea also one more thing the invigilator will be checking your pockets before you enter the room just make sure that you don't have anything uh, I have one case with a student very unfortunate case where he forgot that he had money in his pocket it was deep down in his pockets and when he finished the exam and he went to his locker and then he pulled out a banknote of five dollars from his pocket but the invigilator told him that his result will be cancelled because they suspected that he was cheating it was a very expensive lesson before i took my first pte exam i was told by all my friends the exam room will be very very noisy but I didn't really believe them I was like yeah that's fine and not until I actually took the test and I was struggling to focus to concentrate because everyone was speaking so loudly next to me the emergence of information is certainly one of the important values of literature is that the nourish our mind. And in and especially with the repeat sentence and retail lecture, it was very hard to listen to the audio when people were speaking. And you know, there's not much you can do about this because that's how it is. But what you can do is to prepare yourself by practicing your speaking at home with some noises in the background so that you can get used to it. With the speaking and writing, it's quite straightforward. But with listening and reading, you need to control your own time. So for example, with reading, they can give you 30 minutes for 15 questions but they don't tell you how much time to allocate for each question so it's not two minutes each because not all of the tasks will give you the same point for instance one fill in the blanks question will give you more points than one multiple choice question you might have to spend more time on fill in the blanks instead of spending more time on MCQ and that was my mistake when I first took the exam I was spending way too long on one multiple choice question and ended up not doing fill in the blanks question carefully so that's why you guys have to learn which tasks are more important so that you can allocate a little bit more time to those questions the timer is just on the right corner so keep looking at it Number seven is integrated scoring. I mentioned this so many times, but PTE is a very special exam. When you do speaking, you get points not only for speaking, but you also get points for listening and reading. When you do listening, you get points for reading and even writing. So you get integrated scoring there. So that's why you have to focus on those tasks which give you points for two sections. Yeah, so for instance, retail lecture, will be more important than describe image because retail lecture will give you points for speaking and listening but describe image will only give you points for speaking for speaking tasks like retail lecture you will not be able to take notes on the computer but you have to take notes on the USB notepad and the problem with most students is that when they write fast they end up not understanding what they wrote. Small village, and with every passing generation, it grew in size and importance. The lecture talks about. Paris. So 
that's why when you practice at home, practice not taking, you know, use some techniques for your not taking, such as using abbreviations, some symbols, maybe short forms, signs, mind maps, so that you can easily take down more words, but at the same time understand what you've written. For summarized spoken text, it's easier because you can take notes on, on the computer. For me, it's easier because it's faster, you can get more keywords compared to writing on the paper. But for some people, it might be problematic because you typing speed is not that good. So in that case, you can practice in advance. There are a lot of tools you can use. For instance, there's a website called ratatype.com. You can use that to practice fast typing. The next is your score report. So once you complete your exam, you should receive your scores within five to seven business days, but it's normally within one to two days. The fastest that I got was within three hours. So I finished the test uh, at 11 and I got the result at 2 p.m. They will send you a notification by email and then you have to log in to your account to see the result. You just need to go to my activity then choose view scores. Then you can also check your skills profile at the bottom. Here you will find some brief feedback for your test and if you haven't passed the exam, you can use this to improve for the next attempt. You just saw your exam result and you are not happy. So you think that there must be some technical issue, you missed by you know one to two points and you really want to appeal. What can you do? What you can do is you can request for a technical review by completing the specific form. It must be submitted 15 days within your exam result release. If you found the exam room very noisy or if the headset was not working properly, you know, the microphone was not working properly, then what you have to do is you need to get a ticket number from the invigilator immediately after your exam. So once you finish your exam, you go to the invigilator, tell them about your problem and tell them that you want to get a ticket number. Then you go home and email Pearson, fill, it, fill out the form and also enter the case number. Generally, when you appeal, you will not get any changes in your scores. Personally, I have never seen in six years that they have changed any score report. And what they can do is they will give you another free exam. It's possible to get another free exam. I've done that before and even my students, but it's just very time consuming. So only do it when you are very certain about your performance. So yeah, I've covered all 10 essential aspects, everything I wanted you to know before taking your BTE exam. I hope it was helpful and I'd love to see your comments. Maybe you can share your own tips for other BTE test takers. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and good luck with your exam. Bye!